Finally, to round out our discussion of proteins, let's walk through how to make a protein complex. So protein complexes are generated as new proteins that have either immediate gene products, so monomers, as their components, or even other protein complexes. DNA polymerase of E. coli, as shown in Ecosec, is a good example of a protein complex that's made up of a number of other complexes. And there are a couple large structures, pretty much polymerases tend to be like this, that are also good examples of that. So you can just poke around Ecosec and you'll see good examples of what complex structures can be like. So to make a protein complex, well, we go to protein, new, and we pick the protein type and we pick protein complex. If we picked polypeptide, we'd be making a monomer. And again, that would be done in the case where you have a protein that was maybe purified and characterized, but for which no sequence was ever identified. So number of distinct gene products. You know, if we were expecting, say, a heterodimer, then we click two and it would give us these two spaces. But let's go back and just go with one. We're going to make a homomultimer of aspartate kinase. And so we can either input a protein name directly here or we can input a gene. I'll put in a gene and you can see it populates the protein name there for me so I can check my work and make sure I picked what I meant to pick. So I hit OK and we're in a protein editing frame for our protein complex and we want to give it a name. I'll call it our protein complex and the other thing that we want to do right away, we can always come back and edit the rest of this later, is if we know the coefficient, we can put the coefficient in. So let's say it's a homodimer. We'll put in a coefficient of 2. Now note, you can make a protein complex without knowing the coefficient. So you can just have a sort of generic protein complex where you don't know how many subunits go into it. Let's hit OK. And now what we'll see, well first, as I'll recommend, we hit save again. Now let's cruise down the page here and see this. This is the gene reaction schematic, which you hopefully remember from using our databases and from the introductory webinar. And there's something interesting going on, which is that the reaction is still tied to the monomer. And until we do something about that, if we want to do something about that, that's how it'll be. Now there are cases where a protein multimerizes, but the activity really is at the monomer level. And so you could just leave that this way to show why, yes, it does form a dimer, but the activity is nested firmly in single monomers. But as you're aware, most of the time you're going to have a multimer that only functions enzymatically as a multimer. And so that means we need to port this reaction from the monomer to the dimer. So what do we do about this? Well, since it's early and we won't have edited much information into the enzymatic reaction, we're going to right click on the reaction we're going to click Edit, and we're going to go to Detach Enzymes. Now, if there were multiple enzymes associated with this reaction, which would be able to see from the schematic, we'd have to choose. But here, there's just the one, so we say Detach. It says, are you sure? Did you really mean to do that? Well, yes, we do. And boom, here we are on the reaction, Enzyme Detached. Now we can back up, and now we have our poor lonely enzyme with no associated reaction. Now there's something very important you need to notice here. The enzymatic reaction information has gone away. When we disconnected the reaction from the protein, it deleted that enzymatic reaction frame, the place where we said, yeah, magnesium is an activator. So if you've put a lot of information to that enzymatic reaction, this is not how you want to do this transition, and you'll need to do it in the frame editor. And it's a little complex to explain right now, so I will recommend that you contact us by email if you're in that situation. However, if you're newly curating and editing your brand new database, you don't have that information in there yet, and you can make all your multimers before you ever put any of that in. And in that case, you can do what I just did, disconnect the reaction, then I'll right click here, I'm on the protein complex. Notice our complex frame names are CPLX blah. So they're all complex, very mnemonic. Edit, add reactions. 
and I get a list here, and I can do frame IDs or EC numbers. Now, I don't remember the frame ID for that reaction, but I remember the EC number, so we'll do that. And then we'll hit OK. And now we're back in the editor for the enzyme, for the protein complex. And the reason this is brought up is because we're going to have to give it an activity name. And so we know this is aspartate kinase. It'll actually bother us if we don't put in an activity name for the enzymatic activity. And we could also put into other things now, the evidence for the activity, the cofactors, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll just hit OK. And voila, we now have a lyse C, aspartate kinase, monomer that dimerizes and then carries out this reaction. And that's how you do that. So let's save again. So now we know how to edit and generate reactions, how to edit and generate compounds, and how to edit and generate proteins and protein complexes, and how to connect them to reactions. So in the next step, continuing in the next video in this portion of the webinar, we're going to go from those reactions to the full pathways that you're most likely interested in if you're looking at the metabolic level in your organism. So just come right back to us for the next part where we'll take a look at how to curate and edit a pathway.